Hey everybody, Adam Savage from Tested. Here I am actually in Grant Imahara's shop with Fawn Davis. Uh, and we are looking over some of Grant's uh, loveliest creations. And in front of us is one we both have a long history with, is Grant's BattleBot Deadblow. I think you always were like entering BattleBots as kind of a lark, as kind of like a, let me just see what I can get. Let me see what I can learn from this Oh yeah, process. yeah. We had a completely different approach. And not. Grant's approach was, I want to kill, I want to destroy, I want to make the thing. He was always aiming to win. <laughs> I just wanted to put on a good show. <laughs> I, so there is a legend that I heard uh, from John Foreman about the hammer here. Yes. Um, I was not in the room when this is made, but am I right, this is titanium? Correct. Is yeah, he, he started with steel, and then yeah. that was not good enough, so he went with magnesium, and that was not good enough, so <laughs> <laughs> he did titanium. I that's, remember that's the CNC. So I was his. I was part of his pit crew for the first BattleBots at Long Beach, and I think that was a steel hammer, mm -hmm. and then he came back from that, because that got so beat up. But this titanium hammer was machined at ILM. Yes. You were in the room. Yes. Okay, talk to me about that, because well, the way it was described to me sounded crazy. Oh yeah, it looks like, it's like a fireworks show. <laughs> because it just sparks a lot when the cutter cuts into the titanium. It just, it's a very, very white spark and a lot of, of sparks. Right, and then also what John Foreman was telling me is because titanium work hardens almost instantaneously, you've got to turn all your feeds and speeds up to the maximum, yeah. which sounds, from a machinist standpoint, crazy. Yes. Well, that was his approach on everything, was to turn the, <laughs> turn the machine up to full speed. But he was always right about it. It was terrifying, but he was always right about it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and then this one lasted. This yes. one did not give up the ghost. That is correct. It's impressively heavy for titanium. Yeah. I mean, like... Because yeah, it's I mean, so solid. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna let this settle. <laughs> Can we take a look at the guts? Oh, right, I forgot it was compressed CO2. Was that what he used for yeah. the? Well, yeah, well, it's oxygen, just like you would use in scuba diving. Okay. Then uh, custom built gearboxes for each wheel, independent four wheel drive. Um, yeah, and a massive cylinder for the hammer. And I mean, every other hole that something's not in is a witness mark to a different configuration of motors, batteries, yeah. electronics, and everything. Yeah, just like most of us, he would rebuild this uh, almost from the ground up every single event because you would always find things that you want to improve every time you go. Whatever defeated you in your last match is what you wanted to correct. Right, but then you also learn from watching other people's robots get beaten up, like what kind of force, I mean, the amount of force these things take, the amount of abuse is absolutely shocking even when you're trying to picture how bad it could be. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's remarkable. You also learn a lot from just being around other builders. That's one of the things that I really loved about BattleBots. It was competitive, but it was never so competitive that we wouldn't nobody, share our secrets. Nobody hid their bots. No, no, because yeah. you wanted a good fight. Right, right, it's that loud suit <laughs> thing, right? You want your opponent to be at their best. Yes. You want them to last all the way through the match. Absolutely. The other thing that I want to point out is I don't know if I ever really saw him sweating over this bot. I saw him working on it constantly, but I don't think I ever saw him in a state of like, when am I gonna finish this spot? Like, we all get to that spot, mm -hmm. but I don't know if I ever saw him at that spot. He planned everything so carefully. Yeah. You know, lots of lists and just lots of notes. And um, yeah, I mean, that's how he approached everything, really. Yeah. There was always a calmness about, a, a, you know, his calculating, his thinking and designing and thinking. And well, it's design. totally evident yeah. here, right? Um, were you, you, did you ever support him at one of the, at one of the competitions? Uh, you know, I always had my own robots, so oh, right, we weren't course, ever on course, the same right. team, but we, we certainly, uh, helped each other at ILM when we were working on the different robots and traded a lot of notes. And of course, while we were there, we we're in constant contact. Yeah, um, it was, I remember one of our colleagues was working on his robot, uh, during lunch hours. Yeah. And it was a whole bunch of lunch hours. And when he got eliminated out of BattleBots, his supervisor was like, I think you owe me a few lunch hours. <laughs> <laughs> it was like that extra 10 minutes every lunch hour added up. Um, how, do you, I can't remember how many blows he could get out of a single tank, but it was a lot. Yeah, it was a lot. That's one of the reasons he switched to the air. Originally it was CO2, but that was not enough. Pressure. This gave higher, higher compression and more, more, more iterations. Wow. Yeah. Yep. A lot more dangerous, but he was, you know, of course he was always 
really safe about that stuff. There's, I mean, I just feel so much, uh, I, yeah, so much grantness in the, in the precision and the neatness. I mean, it's like a tidy house in here. Oh yeah. That's not Absolutely. the way I built things. <laughs> I know, me neither. <laughs> you and I are on the same page. Uh, I'd rather be done than than perfect. Yeah. Know? No, I um, know. And I remember I'd be it's like, enough. It's always I, just enough to to be uh, good on camera and get the job done. But he always wanted it to be just machine flawless. Every single one of his uh, screw spacings is measured and perfect. I know. I um, remember I'd be seeing him machining these parts at lunch hours and stuff, yeah. and I'd be like, "Oh man, you have eight of those to make." Yeah. And this is always this is this is always beautiful to me. Yeah. He has a really good uh, metal armor, but then these lightning holes. Everything's lightened as light as you can get it. And was this all CNC or was some of it routed? Um, no, he, he did all CNC. Yeah, I think you're right. I used to do the routing thing because I was in a hurry. <laughs> <laughs> I love the routing trick. When we were all first doing this, mm -hmm. the institutional knowledge we had was zero, yep. right? And Correct. so like the bots just constantly, they were their own worst enemy. They were. And then over the years, everyone sort of built this great set of understandings and a better deep knowledge of what it took. And this just feels like a, such a maturation over those early years. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I remember we we would use a lot of surplus parts early on because mm -hmm. we didn't want to commit to the cost. Yeah, you know, I think at some point this was a like a thirty five thousand dollar robot. That's like a car. <laughs> wow! Wow! Right? You know? this, but that's what these things cost. That's there was no robot this marketplace stuff. back that's then. Correct. This is yeah. like you bought this from industry. Yeah, they were hundreds of dollars a piece. The batteries were expensive. And that doesn't that doesn't account for the amount of hours. Right. Right. You know, it's right. about six right. months work, evenings and weekends uh, for uh, when BattleBots was on Comedy Central, and then before that we used to have a year, which was great. You used but to have. A year between matches. Oh, right, 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 yeah. yeah. But then uh, when it went to Comedy Central, it was every six months. And it was actually kind of brutal. It became work, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I remember, you know, there's all those teachable moments. There was one match where uh, Dead Blow caught on fire inside the, the speed control because oh. there was a shaving of aluminum. I remember Do you this. remember this? I was, that, I, Like these yeah. are the kinds of things that you have to think about the subtlety of, of a piece of aluminum shaking into the electronics, causing a short and catching it on fire. I remember that specifically being blown away by the like, oh my God, how could we have ever foreseen that? But sure enough, there was an open top and this little thing found mm -hmm. its way. Yeah, yeah, it, that, and that's all it takes. It's always the most unlikely thing, I feel like. Um, the other that kills your robot. The other trick, here's what I really specifically remember, was that every time he was working on it and he got it to a stage of some completion, you could be guaranteed to see him drive it in while standing on it. <laughs> yes. That was, that was his move. It was like, mm, yep. <laughs> mm, mm, and it was just that, I just, I, yeah, I'm seeing that delight and pride on his yeah. face as he's like doing his superhero stance on top of Dead Blow, riding it into the... <laughs> <laughs> I remember the testing anytime it was something uh, especially destructive. My favorite memory is that maniacal laughter. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> we had this very distinct laugh that was specific to destroying things, I feel like. And you, it or, was, um, or just great success, maybe. <laughs> and there's no artifice in that laugh. That laugh was completely autonomic. It was like a sneeze, right? <laughs> That's correct. Oh, man. I just, I could spend an afternoon just kind of staring at the pieces. I know, huh? You kind of want to hug it, huh? <laughs> really? Yes. Yeah. As weird as that is. As weird as it is, it totally do. Uncontrollable urge to hug Grant's robot. <laughs> I'm sure there's more behind it than just the 